Geeks podcast. Um, today we're going to go through Kevin Kelly a bit and probably afterwards Seth Godin because, um, well, depending on the information that I can find, depending on how much information I can find, I'm going to, you know, switch, maybe even switch between those two, but maybe switch from one uh, to the other. But I'd like to start with uh, Kevin Kelly here. Um, as I think relatively recently, once again, um, being uh, him being recommended quote unquote by Tim Ferriss on the podcast um which is rather interesting just have to look up something um Well, which is interesting because Tim has recommended his work and or him quite uh, before and, and, and that relatively often, to be honest. So I'd like to go through, I think, his biography, I'd say, um, his about page on the website on the kk.org, kevinkelly.org site. Um, I've actually been trying to, and I'm going to show you that. Uh, there we go. I've been trying to to go through Bing, uh, trying to see, you know, whether I can find some information on that, like uh, on his newest book, which was published actually on the, I think it was the 2nd of May, 2023, oh, okay, the 2nd of May, it's, it's not already May, what, the 2nd of May, isn't May, March, April, April, May. But I can I can buy it. Is this like a pre or okay? It's a pre order. There we go. Now I understand that. But it's it's actually interesting that you know the cover is already ready, and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, here's his website. This is the book that uh, I was trying to get some information on, but obviously, you know, <laughs> when there is nothing, you know, when the book hasn't been even. Um, and published yet. I probably can't find anything, even not by using uh, AI to do so. But here's the, this is interesting. It's not fully um, covering the space. Anyway. Oh, this was already the about page. But I think there was, wasn't there like something about him as well? I thought so about, uh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to read this, this little tiny bit there. Uh, I've been jotting down bits of advice. I wish, I wished I had known earlier in my life and then sharing them with my children. Each one is like a tweet, a wisdom tweet. This year I have put 450 of them into a pocket sized book called excellent advice for living. It will be released on May the 2nd. And you can order it on Amazon. It makes a great gift for a graduating student. I'm extremely optimistic about the future, despite reading the news. I give my reason why we should be optimistic in this new 12-minute TED Talk. I also outline other reasons to be optimistic and why I think the next two decades will be a global boom in this short essay. Last year, I relied on my 1,000 true fans to fund a huge oversized 1,000-page celebration of old Asia. This three volume book set, uh, set is titled Vanishing Asia and it records 9,000 photographs of the festival consumes uh, architecture and rituals that are disappearing in Asia. It is like no other book that has ever been printed. It is now available on Amazon. My title for Wired is Senior Maverick, a magazine I helped co-found 29 years ago. I write one article for Wired per year now. The most recent article concerns the rapidly emerging world of AI image generations or generators and what they will mean for us. As I detail in my article, picture limitless creative creativity, uh, they are truly creative. I frequently give presentations and interviews about my life and work and the consequences of technology. And there we have a portrait disclosure contact and also the biography. We might also get into the biography. And um, what I want to point out is the 1000 true fans thing. Um, which is like the work that I know uh, he has written and the essential of it is um, you basically just need 1,000 true fans to make a living. And um, um, of course, uh, 
I mean, I mean, if you're charging them like two bucks or something, you're making 2000 um, euros or dollars or whatever, which, you know, I think should be sufficient. Um, most often is sufficient. But, um, but anyway, I mean, out of those 1000 true fans, it's, you know, probably going to grow into, into a more, more fans in general. I mean, these are true fans, no, no matter what the fuck you're doing, they're going to support you. And, uh, I mean, it, it may not, it, it may not sound like a lot. I mean, compared to certain numbers that we're seeing on social media these days with, you know, people having a million followers and two million followers and one million subscribers here and then whatever. Um, I mean, we could definitely argue, uh, you know, which or what percentage of these people are actually true fans, but Oh. I'm sorry. But let's have a look at his biography then. I think there was a short one. And this is actually the site that I've seen uh, uh, in the first place. So I think that we're going to go through... Uh, and there are some, some portraits. He looks a bit like an Amish. I don't know if he is. Uh, he, he probably isn't, but... Yeah, maybe he was. I don't know. This is interesting. This uh, really is. Anyways, Kevin Kelly is senior maverick at Wired magazine. He co founded Wired in 1993 and served as its executive editor for its first seven years. His newest book is The Inevitable, a New York Times and Wall Street Journal bestseller. He is founder of the popular Cool Tools website, which has been reviewing tools daily for 20 years. From 1985 to 1990, Kelly was publisher and editor of the Whole Earth Review, a subscriber support the journal of unorthodox conceptual news. Interesting. He co-founded the ongoing Hackers Conference and was involved with the launch of the Well, so W-E-L-L, -L, a pioneering online service started in 1985. Other books by Kelly include Out of Control, the 1994 classic book on decentralized immersion systems, The Silver Cord, a graphic novel about robots and angels, what technology wants, a robust theory of technology, and uh, there is no link for Vanishing Asia, the 50-year project to photograph the disappearing cultures of Asia, and he is currently co-chair of the Long Now Foundation, which is building a clock in a mountain that will take for 10,000 years. Uh, which is interesting. I mean, haven't heard of that. Um haven't heard of that period i don't know if we are gonna go through like the the other stuff that we can find here um but i think apparently he is uh worth first of all mentioning and first of all looking uh, second of all looking up and third of all you know maybe also going a, a deep deep dive into his life and what he's doing and maybe also um i mean i'm I'm quite excited for the book that is coming out in may i think it would i mean it, it really plays into the the whole concept of this podcast i'd say um you know having some some smaller bits to to be philosophical about or one can be philosophical about and um also by a person that seemingly is very or is very successful with uh, what he did, since Wired is indeed doing quite well, I would say. I'm um, going from author to, to author to author. I'd like to, you know, see what Seth spin up these days. Um, I don't know. I think this was... Oh, he hasn't posted yet today. You know, sometimes it's indeed the case that when I'm recording... It may have been the case the last time that it's been later. It's now 10 a.m. Um, but yeah, creating value as an entrepreneur. If you have borrowed money or sold shares, you'll need to build something that is worth more than your labor. Here are some key pillars when value lives, where value lives. Customer attraction, permission, distribution, the network effect, and smallest viable audience. The smallest viable audience is actually also a really interesting concept. What is the smallest amount of people that I need to survive with? Um, I mean, of course, 
it heavily, heavily, heavily depends on what your lifestyle look like looks like. Um, you know what what, you, what you're doing, what maybe also what you would like your lifestyle to be, and whatever. Um, uh, and also which type of audience. I mean, there are probably going to be certain groups that are willing to pay a bit more. Um, there are some groups that um, you know definitely are not going to pay you that that much. So you you need more of them and, and whatever. Custom attraction is the big one. Every day, are there more people who would miss you if you were gone? More customers who don't want to switch to save a few dollars? More organizations that are building their future around what you do? Um, I mean, I think that it's really important to keep that in mind. Uh, to some degree, but I'm also seeing... Um, like a, a bit of a headache one could get by by i think maybe following that in the sense of um well i'm trying everything that i can to create value but you know of course i also would like to have a certain price and you know going down the road of who is who is the cheapest is never a really good idea also being um talked about by by seth um so it's basically hoping. I think, of course, you can make a product that is having a certain price. I'm thinking about, you know, some 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 Apple devices and iPhone and whatever um, that just, you know, at this point of time really work fucking great. And uh, you're paying a certain price for that, but you're okay, you know, you're okay with that because what you're getting, the value that you're getting with this device in this case, um, it's so high that, that you're fine with it. And, um, you know, building that, I think, first of all, is, is, is quite difficult. And second of all, as I've, uh, mentioned before, might be a bit of, bit of a headache sometimes because, you know, you, you might be, you know, really working hard to, to create something really great, but, but in the end, it's, it's not in your control whether people like what you're doing, um, whether they see the value or not, or whether they just, you know, don't have the money anymore and have to um, go to, to other places, to cheaper places. But yeah, permission, permission is the privilege of delivering anticipated personal and relevant messages to the people you want to get them. I'm, I'm sorry, to people who want to get them. It is not a legal construct, it is an emotional one. Who wants to hear from you? I definitely don't want to get so many emails, I think. But yeah, distribution is a practical way to measure brand. How much shelf space do you have? Mental shelf space and physical as well. The network effect is built into your product or service. Does it work better if I tell my friends and use it with them? Is it the actually happening? Is this actually happening or are you simply hoping for it? And the smallest viable audience is the building block of all of this. Have you figured out precisely who it's for and do they agree? The startup exists to find and build assets like these. Yeah, um, I've forgotten about this uh, regarding the smallest viable audience. Um, having a product and searching for an audience for it probably is not as good as an idea as uh, um, knowing an audience and making a product for them. Um, sometimes it's really interesting to me that, uh, that there are certain things, you know, that I thought about even, even actually today, um, where I know, okay, this is indeed something that I have been searching for, um, on the web. And I think this might be a good place to go to, um, what have I been bothered by? You know, what have I been searching for? Um, what would I like to have? And the chances are that there are many, many more people that are having the same issue, that are having the same problem. So by solving that problem for yourself, um, maybe not even yourself, but, um, but but you're seeing a certain problem and, and you're also figuring that, you know, some people might just, you know, like, like that, you know, like um, this, um, how should I say, you know, they, they probably like the solution they would like to have a solution because you know that you know this problem exists and that people are having this problem um and i think if you're thinking about it maybe let's say throughout a year or something you'll probably um getting to 
true to certain conclusions and certain thoughts. And uh, I mean certain things that uh, maybe are bothering you or, um, you know, other people are bothered by and whatever. But yeah, I think with that being said, I'm going to end the episode here. Wish you the best and hopefully see you soon. So.